a lot of young people think that if you're rich, if you're famous, you have no problems. You know, they think that, you know, everything's perfect. You're happy. But if you look at rich and famous people, you know, they get divorced. Uh, they're on drugs or on alcohol too, or um, some of them take their lives. You know, look at what happened with Whitney Houston. Look at what happened with Kurt Cobain. These are world stars. You know, people where everybody thinks they have it all. You know, and why why would they take their life? You know, what was wrong in their life? So it's, it's not true that if you're rich and famous, you have no problems. That's the first thing. So if you're going to make riches and fame the meaning of your life, I think you're on the wrong track. Of course, it's great if you can have a nice home, nice car, no bills to pay, no debts. I understand everybody in that situation. Don't get me wrong here. But let's not live in illusion thinking that if I win the lottery or if I'm the next superstar on uh, America's next idol or something, all my problems are gone and I'm Mr. Happy in person. No. At least it wasn't so in my case. And in, from what I understand, in many others as well. And what happened with me was that in the peak of my career, in the 90s, um, I fell into a big crisis, a big depression, and I wasn't on drugs, I wasn't on alcohol, I wasn't really, you know, getting lost in excessive things, you know? It was just a deep emptiness inside. Like, my soul, my whole being was just like depressed and totally down, totally like, no, no passion for music, no passion for life, no, no desire to, to, to fight, to live, to, to work, it's just everything was like just dead, you know, just like dry. And, um, and I was suicidal for several months. I was in a state where I, I was thinking the only way out is to take my life, you know, and, and I almost did it, you know, I almost did it. Yeah, yeah I was on the window, you know, and I was looking down and um, something in me, I can't explain, um, just like if there was a voice or something saying, hold on, you know? I didn't hear a voice, but it was like a presence of someone there saying, hold on, don't jump, you know? And so I, I came off the window and I just cried and, and, I, and I said, this is not the way to go, you know? This is not the way to go. And then I knew I had to get help. I said, I need professional help. So I didn't have friends, you know? So I got a therapist. Now, if I would have had friends, real friends, I might have gone to them. But I understood, you gotta, you gotta talk to somebody. You gotta share this with somebody. Don't keep it for yourself. Don't stay with your problem. Share it. Somebody who's trustworthy, you know? And so I did a, I did a therapy for a year and a half. Once, twice a week, I go see this therapist, you know, and, and just, talk and get it all out and order things, you know? And, and this is what I think people should do. If people are in a situation where they're going through a really hard time, where they're thinking of suicide, um, get help, get help, get professional help. Or if you have a good friend, you know, a good friend will listen. A bad friend will say, ah, it's not so bad. No. You need somebody who's really listened, who will go through the tunnel with you, who will take your hand and go through the tunnel with you. And then the only thing I can say is, hold on, hold on. If you're going through that, hold on. It might take a while, but there's light. It's funny because there was a, a woman who uh, many years ago, she said, um, I'm going to pray that God gives you good friends. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know. And then a year later, I met uh, my closest friend. And two years later, I met my second closest friend. And they've been with me for the last 15 years. So maybe the thing to do is to pray for a good friend, because that's what that woman did for me, and it worked. <laughs>